in regarding the importance of marriage. Now, the second part of the topic is how to choose the spouse in Islam. And that is where the importance of marriage comes in. Because here, it's very important because if you and I make a mistake here, it's not only that I'm putting myself into trouble, also the generation to come also will be affected from my decision. And that is why it's very important. When we come to make a choice of choosing a spouse, I have to think far away. Not to think about today. No, because today I'm a single, I'm going to be a husband, but tomorrow I'm going to be a father, and then becomes a grandfather. So all these children, generation that are coming, they will all base on the decision that I make today. If that decision is made correctly, the children to come, they will benefit from that decision. If the decision was made wrong, also the children will be affected from that decision as well. That is why it's very important to make sure that when we make the choice, when we want to choose, we have to make the right choice. Number one, here the Prophet tells us that when you want to choose a spouse, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he started from men. He started from men. I said, if a man wants to choose a woman, the Prophet gave four qualities to look. One of these four, if any of these four is found in a woman, the Prophet said, you are allowed to marry her on the Sunnah of the Prophet. The first condition, the first quality the Prophet mentioned, I said, The first one, it says, لِمَالِهَا a person wants to marry a woman because she's wealthy. She has a lot of money. You don't want to work. You want to sit, relax, enjoy the money. Why not? See how Islam is so kind. You get a woman, she's rich. You sit on the couch. There is remote control. You flip all the channels of the wall. The tea is coming back and forth. Credit card is working. No sorrow, no grief. The Prophet said, if that is what you want, and the woman is not, doesn't have any problem, I say, go for it. You are allowed to marry somebody because of your wealth. That's one. That's option number one. Option number two, the Prophet says, وَتُنْكَعُ الْمَرْعَةُ لِجَمَالِهَا You can marry a woman because of how she loves her beauty. A woman is, mashallah, she looks so super, super beautiful. <laughs> See, one of the good about Islam is this. Islam doesn't say that you have to marry somebody who is you are not comfortable with. No. As a matter of fact, Islam wants you to marry a woman that when you walk in the house, you are happy that you're coming at home. You are happy when you look at her face. Like Imam Ali said about Zahra. He said, Kuntu idha nadartu ila Zahra in jala anni al wal ahzan. He said, anytime I just take a look at Zahra, all my sorrow and pain disappears. That is how a man should be. That when you look at your spouse, when you look at your wife, you are happy by looking at her face. Because of her beauty, because of her love, the Prophet said is another reason a man can base on to marry a woman. That's number two. Number three, وَتُنْكَ الْمَرْعَةُ لِمَقَامِهَا A position a woman has. Her father is president of the country. Her father is a minister. Right? Her father is, I don't know, any position that she holds, or she herself holds the position. And you know that if you marry her, mashallah, you get another position too. Next to her, as long as you have the right to do that. That is option number three. Number four, the Prophet says, You can marry a woman because of her deed, her faith, her iman. Her fear of Allah. He said, you can marry a woman because of these four reasons. Then the Prophet comes back and tells each one of us. He said, you know all the four options that I gave? Yes, Ya Rasulullah. He said, if you ask me as an expert, 
See, when you want to buy a car, you always look for an aspect in the car, right? So they can give you a good deal. So that you buy a good car. You want to buy a house, you're looking for a good person who is a good realtor. So that way he can find a good deal. The prophet said, I'm the aspect in this field when it comes to choosing a spouse. So if you want my opinion, I tell you, who is the best out of the four? He said, the best of the four is the one with the D, the fourth one. Now let's say we are Americans, right? We always ask why. And our children, that's wrong, right? right? We Americans, anything that you say, you say why. You tell our children, go to sleep, they say why. You drink your water, why. Now let's be Americans, we're going to ask Rasulullah, why? Why not the first one? Now here the prophet answered. He says that the reason why I tell you the fourth is the best of all, this my reason. Reason number one. He said, if you marry a woman because of money, he said, there is no guarantee the man will stay forever. If the man finish, then the marriage finish. Because the reason of marriage is gone. So the marriage is also is gone. So it's not a good reason to marry a woman because of that. So if you marry somebody because of money, the money is gone, that's it, the marriage is over. That is number one. Number two, you marry somebody because of her beauty. And say, it's not a good reason. Why? Today she is 20, 21, mashallah. She looks beautiful. Now tell me the same thing if she becomes 75. <laughs> it's the same person. It's the same woman, right? She was the beautiful woman at the age of 25. But the same woman now 70, you don't see the same thing you used to see. So what happened to the marriage? Now the marriage is in trouble because I don't see what I used to see before. That's what the Prophet says. This is not a good reason. So what should I do, Ya Rasulullah? Now let's go to the third. The Prophet said, no, that is not a good reason either. Why? He said, because position is always given by people and they can take it to. How many of us vote somebody in the office? The next day I say, I didn't know that he's that bad. Next day I'm not voting him in. And then the next day he doesn't get the vote and he doesn't have the position anymore. Oh no, the people vote him or they vote her in the position. When he does something against their will, they say, you know what, you're not longer our president. You calm down. That's it. We don't want you anymore. That position is gone. So any of these three, there is no guarantee to base on that to make your marriage work. That's why the prophet said, these three are not a good reason. Which one is the best, Ya Rasulullah? I say the religion. What is the base? He said, because the religion is based on Allah. And Allah is always and will always be there. Not like other three. And then he said, let me add another thing also. And that is, he said, if a person marry a woman because of a deen, he said, Allah automatically tells the other three, go with this one, which is the fourth one. Which means if a woman, a man marry a woman because of a deen, then Allah let the beauty come in. Then Allah sent the position to come in. Then Allah sent money to come in as well. The other three automatically will follow because this is the best of the all. That is the prophet said. Now, there is a, this is if the person is a man. Now, what about if it's a woman? She was also looking to marry somebody who is, let's say for example, a mu'min, she's looking for. What's the quality that Islam has put in front of a woman? To look in order to choose a right spouse. Also the Prophet says, When any person, a man, walks into my house and asks my daughter's hand, the Prophet says, look at these two things. Number one, he says, Deen, look at his religion. Meaning, is he praying? Is he fasting? Is he fearful of Allah? Not what we always look for. Unfortunately today, when somebody walk into our house for marriage, you know what we ask? We ask impossibles. Impossibles meaning, we ask in things that doesn't exist. Because some of us, some of the sisters, and it's something from the brother's side, MashaAllah, they give you a list 
of a person they look like they want Allah to make another person different according to their shape. Like you go to the car company and you give the car company, oh car company, I want you to make this type of car. Design this car like this for me. They put some conditions like they tell Allah, Ya Allah, you didn't create anybody with this quality, but this is the person that I'm looking for, so I want you to design a human being like this. For example, they like, I want somebody to be only say you. You say it is good and it's wrong. There is no doubt about that. But it shouldn't be the only reason to base on to marry. Because remember our prophets and the Imam, they were Sayyids too. But they marry outside the Sayyid. Which means it's okay to marry outside the Sayyid. Yes, if a person is a Sayyid or a Sayyid and she marries somebody a Sayyid, it's good. However, that shouldn't be the only reason that if a person is not a Sayyid, I'm not getting married to them. No. That is one problem. Number two, sometimes we even put height. He has to be six foot three. If he's six foot four, I don't want it. If he's six foot and two and a half, I don't want it. It has to be six three. Allah, Allah. Maybe I don't know where Allah SWT has created somebody in that size and looking that this has to be somebody that matches your, your intention. There's no, nothing like that. Sometimes we ask another thing. We say, hey, the person has to be, for example, he has, so this is from the brothers, she has to know how to cook biryani. That's one of the conditions. <laughs> okay, brother, have you ever seen something, have you ever heard something called, she can learn to cook it? <laughs> There's something called, she can learn after the marriage. Why is that to me? She has to be a person who knows how to cook this food. Alhamdulillah, there's a recipe on Almighty Google, she can Google and find anything and then she can learn. What's the big deal? That is one of the problems we have. That we say she has to know how to, and on top of that, he has to have American passport, <laughs> Canadian passport or Australian passport. If he has, let's say, Ghanaian passport, <laughs> any other passport that is not these three countries, not in the list. <laughs> That is one of the choices. <clears throat> Some of the choices, they say he has to have this amount of money. How much? He has to have at least half a million in his account. Allah Akbar. That is one of the conditions. And so many, and so many, and so many, that if you go, we're making it more complicated than Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala asks us to do. The Prophet and Imam, they told us to make the marriage very easy so that people can get married. <clears throat> that is not something that Islam has taught us. For that matter, the Prophet told us when a man comes to my house to ask for your daughter's hand, he said, what you should look for? Tardawna deena, the religion. Is he practicing? Is he a mu'min? Is he, mu is he a person who fears Allah? That is what is more important. Number two, look at his behavior. It's very important. Because they ask Imam Hussein alayhi salam. As we are Abba Abdullah, why did the Prophet put this condition for sisters that a man have to have a good character? Imam Hussein says, because because when he becomes angry, at her, he wouldn't oppress her. If he has a khlaq, he always have a limit. He wouldn't go beyond that to oppress the wife. Wa ila abba, and if he loves her, when everything is normal, he always will treat her in the right way as well. That's why akhlaq is very important. Today, one of the reasons why Brothers, our marriage have a lot of problems and we have the rate of divorce so high is because we neglect all these things from the Prophet in Ahlul Bayt and we created our own. And that is the problem that we have. So the Prophet said, Anybody who walks in and he is a Muslim and good practicing Muslim, he said, Number two, look at his manners, his character. If he has these two, the Prophet said, Fazal with you. Allow him to get married to your daughter. Why? He said, Wa illa, if you fail, takun fitnatun wa fasadun kabir. The Prophet said, there will be a lot of corruption. Huh? 
and fitna, which is trial and troubles after that, if we fail to do. 